Let's talk about detective techniques that get people talking, often to their detriment. Detectives use a lot of different techniques to get people comfortable enough to talk or nervous enough to make admissions. We always say it is a mistake to talk to detectives, and there's a reason for that. Detectives are trained professionals. They spend their careers mastering interrogation techniques. For example, it's not uncommon to hear of detectives simply making a phone call or showing up at someone's door with an invitation to come down to the station and talk. We've even had instances where police or detectives conduct interrogations over the phone. And shockingly, people have made admissions over the phone. We're all taught to respect law enforcement. That combined with the nerves that kick in when you're talking to someone who has a badge tends to lead to admissions that people might not make to other people. There's also another reason that detectives want you to come down to the station voluntarily. One, it puts you at ease. You imagine you might be there as a witness as opposed to a suspect. Or even if you're a suspect, things can't be that serious if the detective has invited you down as opposed to arrested you and brought you down to the station. The conversation will always begin with the detective telling you that you're free to leave, that you're not under arrest, and that you're here voluntarily to just have a conversation. The reason detectives are doing that is because if you're not in custody, your Miranda rights don't apply. The detective does not have to tell you you have a right to an attorney. You have a right not to talk to them. You have a right to remain silent. Because detectives know they're putting you at ease and they're not having to give you these Miranda warnings, they know you'll be much more likely to talk to them. Another technique that you've seen in movies that actually happens in real life is the good cop, bad cop routine. This happens a lot after a person's been arrested. With the good cop, bad cop routine, you'll have two officers or two detectives walk into a room and one of them will start questioning you aggressively. And by aggressively, I mean they will act like you're already guilty, that they really want to bury you under the courthouse or the jailhouse and prove your guilt and get you the maximum possible sentence. And you'll have another detective in the room who's being nice to you, who's saying things aren't quite as bad as this first officer is telling you. They'll say they're there to help you. The first detective might in fact leave the room and the second detective starts talking. And they're doing this first to scare you into talking and then creating a pathway for you to be able to talk to someone who seems like they could help you. Remember, officers are allowed to lie to you during the course of an investigation. And this is really a third tool that they use. It's not uncommon for that first cop, the bad cop, to start saying things like, we already know you're guilty. We have proof that you're guilty. We have your cell phone and that's shown us you're guilty. We have other people's statements. There's a video recording. Even when those statements aren't true, that first officer might act like you absolutely have no hope, thereby enhancing your desire to talk to someone who seems like they could help you in the situation. Understand, officers are allowed to mislead you and outright lie to you. They know the stress level that is increasing and the results that that can create. They just want you to open up and talk to them. There are many valid reasons to have these interrogation techniques, but there's also a downside. And the downside is that people who are not guilty for a variety of reasons might be overcome with the situation and start making admissions to just get out of that room, to not be in a room with two police officers or a police officer who who thinks they've done something really bad. A fourth technique that's very commonly used by police officers is to offer you a polygraph or say, we'll give you a lie detector test. In fact, they may say something like, if you take a polygraph and pass, that will end our investigation. And that's really a partial truth at best. First, understand polygraphs are not even admissible in court. And there's a reason for that. They're not reliable. There are a million reasons you could fail a polygraph. Being in a room with a police officer is a great reason to be nervous and for your heart rates to be elevated and your responses to questions to be different than they would be in a normal situation. The officers are using polygraphs to see if, first of all, you fail them and if so, to use that as leverage against you. But second, to test you on whether or not you're willing to give a polygraph. And third, regardless of the actual test results, remember they can lie to you about what those results actually are. So they might tell you the polygraph was inconclusive or they might tell you that the polygraph showed you 
you are lying. Again, just to get you to keep talking. It is always our preference that we talk to you before you talk to a detective. So if you get a phone call from someone in law enforcement and they want to talk to you, reach out to us. In almost every case, we're going to tell you that it would be a mistake to talk to a police officer or a detective. But there are a lot of things that we can do as your attorneys to gather more information, to know what you're going to be charged with, that if there's a warrant coming to try to get a heads up before you're arrested in front of your friends or family or coworkers. So call an attorney as soon as a detective reaches out to you for a statement, even if you believe you may only be a witness to what happened. If you have any questions, drop a comment below. We'd be happy to answer them in a future video. You can also check us out at versustexas.com.